We're now going to start a section on uh, 2D potential flows uh, using complex variables. Uh, so let's start off by looking at uh, just a two-dimensional plane here. And uh, usually we look at this in terms of x and y. Uh, so if we have a point here, uh, we'd say this is an xy location. Uh, but we're now going to look at this plane in terms of complex variables. And so we'll have the real axis here is the x-axis, and then the y-axis is the imaginary axis. And so that point, x, y, uh, we can define as z. We're going to call that our, uh, our complex position. Uh, z is simply x plus i, y. And that is our complex position. So we'll be referring to things in terms of z um, as some position on this xy plane or this real and imaginary plane. Uh, and it simply has components of x and y, x in the real direction and y in the imaginary direction. Okay, so um, uh, let's also look at uh, one other variable that we'll be using. Um, and just as a, a review real quick, uh, we're familiar with the term phi. This is uh, what we call our velocity potential. And, um, and psi, which is a stream function. And uh, both of those can are, are functions of x and y. Uh, so they can, um, they depend on our xy location. And uh, we're going to actually combine those into a single variable called the, uh, we're going to call it capital phi. This is going to be called the complex velocity potential. Okay, and uh, the definition of of capital phi is simply little phi plus i psi. Um, and so again, uh, psi and, and phi can both be uh, functions of x and y location. And so this capital uh, phi, which is our complex velocity potential, um, will also be a function of x and y position or a function of z, our complex position that we've defined up, up here. So we'll be talking about this, this capital phi uh, in terms of, uh, as a function of z, uh, that it changes with our, our position on our real and imaginary axes.